Yo, 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 what's up everyone? For those of you who don't know me nor watch my videos, I got 200 mil summoning XP recently, so I decided to make this summoning guide. Whether you're trying to go for level 99, level 120, or 200 mil XP yourself, regardless of what your goals are, this guide will help. I'll be showing you helpful items to make your training go faster, best ways to get charms, what pouches to make at different levels, cheap and expensive methods, and best obelisk locations to use. i also show you where to look to get the most updated information on certain things that I talk about, so regardless of when you're watching this, a lot of stuff I say will still be relevant. There are also times down in the description below that link to different topics I cover in the video. My methods can even account for significant price changes and how to still find the cheapest pouches to make. I also consider my guide to be Iron Man friendly as a major factor I do take into consideration and mention when certain summoning ingredients may be hard to get. So let's get into it. We're going to start off with helpful items that will make your training go faster. I know not everyone will be able to get everything here, at least not right away, but you should at least know about them so that eventually, hopefully, you will. So I split this up into three tiers. There is uh, what I call get it as soon as possible tier, which are basically items that are forever helpful, regardless of what you're doing or when you're doing it, and that's why you should get it as soon as possible. First, we have the Charming Imp, which will automatically pick up charms for you, and you have the option to select what charms you want. The ones you don't want can be destroyed and converted to XP. It's not a lot of XP, but every little bit does help. The Shaman Outfit, which has 5 pieces to it, granting 1% bonus XP per piece and 6% in total if you have the full set. The Modified Shaman Headdress. The Shaman Headdress is already a part of the Shaman Outfit, but it can be upgraded and that's when it becomes a modified version, which comes with additional benefits. The best one is having a 5% chance of saving some charms when making pouches, as well as some daily such as free shards and teleports. The Summoning Cape, which sounds a bit counterintuitive considering this is partially a 99 guide but if your goal goes beyond that this will help as it has a two percent chance of saving charms the next tier is use it if you get it tier which the only thing on here are the spirit gems spirit gems gives you the chance of saving some charms just so you can use them and do more summoning so it's worth using if you get it passively through doing whatever as it's not even tradable so you can't do anything else with it but i wouldn't do anything to purposely farm these because if you're going to farm these you might as well just farm actual charms at that point these can go in your pocket slot by the way so they won't be taking up space in your inventory the last tier i call it worth mentioning but may or may not be worth using most of these things are actually worth using but only under certain conditions as they do come with cons Charming Potion, which gives you one additional charm per drop for 6 minutes, and Charm Drop Enhancer, triple charm for 40 minutes. Some of the charms you're going to end up getting might be passively obtained from something like Slayer. That's probably not a situation where you want to use these, as you're not always going to be fighting a monster that may have a high charm drop rate. So that's why you want to make sure you're not using these on the wrong thing. Charming Potions, you can use as much as you want, but they do cost money. So I suppose you could use it all the time if you can afford it. Charm Drop Enhancer, however, can only be obtained from the D&D familiarization, which resets weekly, so you definitely don't want to waste these on just anything. I'll cover this D&D in a minute, by the way. Inspire All Relic, 2% XP boost to all summoning stats, including summoning. This thing is great. It's just a matter of whether you want to get uh, 119 Archaeology for it, unless you already have it, or are close to it, then by all means go ahead. The Summoning Focus gives you 20% bonus XP for one focus per pouch. Problem is, these things cost about 5k at the time that I'm making this video, which even for the best pouch is only a couple hundred additional XP, which is not worth it. So, worth mentioning, but only worth using if it drops in price significantly. The Portable Bank Box is used for the absolute fastest summoning training method in the game, but this method is also very expensive. Uh, the cost is not for the Portable Bank Box itself, but the method being used. It really depends on how fast you want whatever your goal is, but we'll cover how this method works later. One thing I want to cover is the familiarization D&D, as mentioned before. This is a D&D you can do once per week, so it resets at the beginning of every Wednesday in game time. It will show up at the beginning of every two hours and will stay active for 20 minutes at a time. You can talk to Pickup6 in Taverly to find the location of his assistant, which is where familiarization takes place. He doesn't give you an exact location, but rather a hint. There is a rune wiki page for familiarization where if you search for the hint you can find the location as there are only so many of them. Before going there though, if you have the as a first resort quest completed, I will recommend going to spring here for the unlimited run energy. But after that, go to where his assistant pick and mix is, talk to him to begin, and your objective is to collect 60 of these raw shards off the ground. There's no time limit, but technically you do have to avoid the monsters at the top of screen, otherwise they will drain your energy. You don't have to be so careful though, 
if you do this fast enough, you should be able to do what you have to do before that happens. But once you're done, you can claim either a triple charm drop enhancer for 40 minutes. It's in the form of a ticket and you can even keep it in your bank until you're ready. You can't hold more than one of these at a time though. You can also choose summoning supplies, which I believe can also give you pieces of shaman outfit for the XP boost. Now we're going to talk about the different types of charms and how to get them as they're not tradable. Of course, you can get them passively through the various monsters you kill throughout the game, especially through Slayer and such, which does fine, don't get me wrong. That's largely what I did actually, and I tried to save myself time by only using charms during double XP. The slowest part about summoning is trying to get the charms themselves, not the actual training. The actual training by itself, assuming you already have the charms, would actually make this one of the fastest skills in the game, if not the fastest. But if you really need or want the levels and need to farm the charms or just want to know what to use your triple charms or charm potion on, this should be helpful. Keep in mind these aren't the only monsters that drop these, just some of the best ones based on drop rates. For ghoul charms, I would go with either giant rock crabs, hellhounds, or fire giants. Green charms would be metal dragons, any up to mithro and blood belts. Crimson Charms would be Water Fiends, and I wouldn't even bother with anything else to be honest, but some seem to like Dagonoffs too. Blue Charms would be Exile, Cow Fights, and Glacors. There's also this thing you can kill once per day named Bork who will drop 5 Blue Charms, 7 Crimson Charms, and 2 Green Charms every time, but I repeat, you can only do this once per day. You can't use a Charm Drop Enhancer or a Charm Potion on it, it's still nice nonetheless. These charms are listed in order from worst to best in terms of XP, but I wouldn't count out any just because I'm saying they're worse. The worst ones are actually more efficient to use at lower levels, and generally speaking, if I had to pick a single thing here to use the Triple Charms and Charming Potion on, it would 100% be Water Fiends for Crimson Charms. You should, however, take your own combat stats into consideration and whether or not you can actually kill these monsters effectively before deciding which one you actually want to do and whether the charms are worth it. For example, technically Blue Charms give the best XP out of all of them, but I don't think they're the most efficient to try to farm because their drop rates are so bad compared to Crimson Charms. Crimson Charms can also be one of the most cost efficient depending on what kind of pouch you make. Anyways, once you have your charms, the way you train summoning is besides the charms, you also need blank pouches and spirit shards, which can be bought from any summoning shop or the grand exchange, although the buy limits for the spirit shards are pretty low considering uh, how many of these you'll need. You can run through them pretty fast. And you also need a specific ingredient depending on what pouch you want to make. You bring these to an obelisk, click on it, and you can turn your entire inventory into pouches at once for one big XP drop. Now we're going to talk about various training methods. First off, you should use a bank preset with all the gear you might have, such as a shaman outfit and all your ingredients in your inventory. This way, every time you bank, you can just click one button and all the pouches you had from the previous inventory will be automatically deposited and replaced with the supplies to make more. If you have spirit gems you're trying to use, by the way, you should pay particular attention to that because sometimes the name changes when you start using it so your bank preset won't recognize that and you won't automatically withdraw another one if you use up all the charges on the last one. Starting off, this is the most beginner training method there is, and that is running back and forth between the Taverly Bank and the Taverly Summoning Shop. Every time you come back to the bank, you can use the Taverly Lodestone to get fairly close, and going to the Summoning Shop, you can use a Surge ability to get there a little faster. A more mid-level training method is using a Spirit Kayat Pouch. This familiar has the ability to teleport you to some fishing colony, and just so happens to drop you in a spot that's close to an obelisk. Then you pair this with another teleport that gets you close to a bank. My favorite one for that would be the Tokuzol as it gives unlimited teleports right next to multiple banks, but it requires completion of the Elder Kiln quest to obtain. Alternatively, you can use various types of jewelry teleports such as the Amulet Glory to Edgeville or Ring of Dueling to Castle Wars. A high level training method requires completion of the Plague's End quest which requires 75 summoning and also a bunch of other stats. This quest gives you access to the Elf City of Prifdinus. And it's a really big city that's split up into different districts focusing on various skills. One of the skills that the Amlod district focuses on is summoning. There is an obelisk here. If you have something called an attuned crystal teleport seed, these aren't tradable by the way, you have to collect 4,000 of what's called harmonic dust from doing various tasks around the city to make one out of a regular crystal teleport seed. And the attuned version gives you unlimited teleports to various parts of the city. You can teleport to another district called Ithil for quick access to a bank, then to Amlod, walk a bit to get to an obelisk. Alternatively, there is a fairy ring next to the obelisk. If you have some kind of teleport that can quickly get you access to a fairy ring and a bank, such as the Tokuzol to the fight caves, you can use that to bank and to teleport right back here using the code DJS. You can also just simply run back and forth between a bank and the obelisk if you have no teleports, the distance is still shorter than Taverly 1. 
A really good additional benefit of using the Amlod one is that every few hours or so, the city can provide boosts to two different districts at the beginning of every hour, which you can take advantage of as long as you're inside the city. There are eight districts in total, and every time one appears, it has to go through a two-hour cooldown when it's done, so the one you want may appear every few hours or so. The one you want in this case is the Amlod boost, which gives you 20% bonus XP to summoning, which actually doubles during double XP, making it 40%. Keep in mind when this boost appears, it lasts an entire hour. That's actually pretty crazy. A second really good benefit is that Amlot has the ability to exchange your pouches spirit shards. This may or may not be worth it depending on you and the pouch that you're making. This is great though because you can exchange your pouches for more shards, then just bring a beast of burden familiar to carry more supplies and withdraw them so you can make more. There are some instances where you might not even be able to sell your pouches because they're not popular and maybe you don't have access to Amlot and you can't turn them into shards either. There's actually another person you can go to is this ogre by this obelisk near Yanil. The problem is this guy is far from a bank, so it's best to make all your pouches first, then bring them to him, all noted in one trip. You can also turn your pouches into scrolls, which give you more summoning XP and they stack, creating more inventory space for you. But be careful with this one because people can be even less likely to buy scrolls. You might have to test it out yourself to see if the specific scroll that you're making can actually sell. The turning pouches into scroll method works at any obelisk by the way, not just Amlod. One last method I want to talk about is the portable deposit box method. This is the fastest method in the game and you can get about 20 mil XP per hour using this method during double XP, maybe even more. Two problems with this though is that this is an expensive skill as it is. This method just adds to the cost and portable deposit boxes may not be so easy to come by these days. I don't even think you can currently get new ones, but of course they could always put more in the game if they wanted, but that's why I don't even have one to show you in the video. Luckily, some people may still have some, and when they put one down, you're allowed to use it as well. It's an item you can put down pretty much anywhere, it stays active for an hour, and you'll be able to use it like a regular deposit box. If anyone else is using these for summoning, you're most likely to find one of these in Taverly during a double XP. I believe Taverly is the only spot this works at, so basically what you do is, you bring all your ingredients noted, you can sell some to pick up sticks and buy them back unnoted. This is an instant shop by the way, so no one can see your items, and also be careful not to sell too many. You might lose some in the process, and what if you have to log out or something before you can use all the ones you sold. Maybe just sell like 500 at a time. So yeah, buy them back unnoted, make your pouches, and send them to the bank using the portable deposit box. If you can't get your hands on a portable deposit box, an alternative you can do to this method is something I mentioned earlier, and that's by turning your pouches into scrolls so it stacks and creates more room in your inventory. I do need to reiterate though that you should be careful with this method as there is a chance you might not be able to sell the scroll back, so test it out yourself first. Now I'm going to get into what to do at each level. Everything that I'm going to mention here are just my suggestions, but if you absolutely insist on making the best use of your charms and get the fastest XP possible, you basically want to make the best pouches you can using whatever charms you may have, which you can easily get that info by just clicking the skill in game. But two things that doesn't account for is the cost to make each pouch because you do lose money on most pouches, if not all, when you calculate the cost of all the materials versus the cost of the actual pouch. And when I say cost, I'm actually referring to cost per XP, which is when you take the net cost, then divide it by the amount of XP that the pouch gives you. This helps you determine what pouch gives you the best XP for your money. The second thing it might be the ease of access to whatever the additional ingredient may be. You don't necessarily have to get them yourself as a large majority of ingredients are tradable unless you're an Iron Man of course, but you still might not be able to buy them on the GE depending on how common the item is. Starting from level 1, I would highly recommend doing the Wolf Whistle quest, which I have a guide for by the way, I'll link in the description below. It only takes a few minutes and will give you enough summoning XP to bring you to level 4 along with rewarding you with 275 gold charms. Pretty nice jump star if you ask me. At level 4, you can only make 2 possible pouches and they both require gold charms, so you don't have a choice here despite them being one of the worst charms. Dreadfowl pouches are the best at this level and I will recommend making them until level 16. They grant 9.3 XP each, this is the base XP of course, and all my calculations are based off this number. Each pouch requires 1 gold charm, 8 spirit shards, and 1 raw chicken. You need to make a total of 266 pouches to get to level 16. Raw chickens are actually a little bit pricey to be honest, but as I said, there's no better options at this level, but at least they're easy to obtain as all you have to do is kill low level chickens if you want to go that route. As mentioned earlier, these are just suggestions. You can do whatever you want, of course. I also include alternatives. These are pouches that you unlock within whatever specific level range I'm talking about. They are better XP as they are locked at higher levels, but I skipped over them due to 
reasons that vary depending on the pouch. In this case, it's only because I think the ingredients may be hard to get, especially on your own at low levels, which is a pretty significant factor as without those ingredients, you can't even train anything. From levels 16 to 28, I would make granite craft pouches. At level 16, these are the best pouches you can make. It's more XP than any of the pouches on the previous screen, and it's cheaper. By the way, at level 18, you can make these Desert Worm pouches, which is the first pouch you can make that requires green charms. It is double the cost of Granite Crab pouches, which to be honest, still isn't bad, but take into consideration that these charms may not be easy to come by since greens are less common than gold. You ideally want to save the higher tier charms in general for pouches that are actually worth it as you obviously unlock more pouches that grant even more XP as you level and they're possibly even cheaper. There are actually even some crimson and blue charm pouches you can make at these levels but I'm not even going to list them here because I don't recommend using them at all at these levels. If you insist on going against what I'm saying here by the way and want to just use all your charms you should definitely at least use your lower tier charms first and work your way up to maximize your gains. From levels 28 we got some options now that we can use both gold and green charms but as I said green charms are harder to come by so personally I would still try to use gold charms for a little bit longer you can even do a mix of both if you're sticking with gold charms I would also stick with granite crabs as they are the significantly cheapest pouch you can make with gold for a while if you're using green charms you can make compost mounds which are slightly cheaper than granite crabs and more xp of course from levels 33 to 41 I would use green charms exclusively at these levels and save gold charms as there are still better things you can make with gold charms at higher levels but the pouches at these levels aren't too good. So with the green charms, I would make beaver pouches, which require one green charm, 72 shards, and willow logs, granting 57.6 XP each. You need to make 398 of these. From levels 41 to 47, I would make McCall pouches, which require one green charm, 78 spear shards, and one clean guam for 72.4 XP per pouch. You need to make a total of 371 of these. From levels 46 to 49, I think this is a decent level to start using crimson charms, as any crimson Crimson charm pouches you make from this point is better XP than all gold and green pouches. I would still suggest hanging on to those though just in case you run out. And it's still not terrible XP rates for these levels, but for this I would recommend making Pyrolord pouches which require one Crimson charm, 111 shards, and one tinder box for 202.4 XP each. You'll need to make 118 pouches to get through these levels. These pouches are pretty cheap to make and only cost about 6 GP per XP, which is low compared to most pouches. But even so, for some reason, tinder boxes are ridiculously expensive. About 600 coins each on the Grand Exchange when they're only one coin from any store that carries them. If you want to buy tinder box from stores, you can actually cut your costs per pouch in half. The only downside is you would have to make runs between the stores and the bank, but not to mention the limited quantities a store might have. There's actually a guy named Ignatius Vulcan found roaming around the forest somewhere southeast of the Ranging Guild that carries 60,000 of these, which should be way more than enough. There's a bank to the west that you can use. From levels 49 to 61, you can start to make bloated leech pouches, which require one crimson charm, 117 shards, and one raw beef each. Raw beef is also expensive at about 800 coins, but the overall cost of creating this pouch is only slightly more expensive than Pyrolord pouches if you buy tender boxes from the Grand Exchange. If you buy a tender box from a store, then Pyrolord pouches are still way cheaper for slightly less XP, so that's why I have them listed here as an alternative. Although for the raw beef, you can also kill cows. So as I keep mentioning, a lot of these things are up to you. Starting at level 52, you can make spirit terror bird pouches, which require one gold charm, 12 shards, and one raw bird meat. I mentioned this earlier, but I want to repeat that when I have alternatives that require different charms, you can do a mix of both depending on how many of each charm you have and whichever one you want to farm. Your math on how many needs to be made might just be a little more complicated. Uh, the Terror Birds are actually an even cheaper option than Pyro Lords, but you probably don't want to do them all the way through these levels just because they're a gold charm pouch and give so little XP. The reason why they're so cheap, by the way, is because the ingredient is easy to get, which makes it cheap, and the pouch itself is actually one of the most useful in the game, which keeps the price up. It's what's called a BOB, or a Beast of Burden Familiar, basically familiars that can carry items for you. Terror Birds can carry up to 12. Now, of course, they're better ones at higher summoning levels, but for people with low summoning levels, this one definitely does the job. 
Even high levels, if you have some extra gold charms and want to keep using them, I would recommend only making spirit terror birds with them as they're one of the best and cheapest pouches you can make with gold charms. Keep in mind, this is only if you happen to have extra gold charms. I would not exclusively do this all the way in 99, nor try to farm gold charms in order to get there as there are pouches just as cheap that you can make with higher tier charms that of course give better XP rates. I would only recommend still using gold charms only because... You know, charms aren't tradable and you gotta get them yourself, so in terms of that, it might save you a little bit of time. From level 61 to 74, we're going to switch over to Smoke Devil Pouches, which requires Goat Horn Dust, which is an easy ingredient to get. And it's actually even cheaper than pouches previously mentioned. Yes, even cheaper than Pyrolord Pouches if you buy your Tinder boxes from a store. Also, at level 63, you can start making this pouch called Spirit Cobras, which is actually currently the most profitable pouch you can make in the game. Assuming you can get enough charms and make pouches efficiently, this can currently make you about maybe 17 mil-ish per hour. There's apparently a crazy money-making method you could do with these pouches, and that's why they cost so much, but I'm not going to get into that because that in itself has nothing to do with summoning training. Now the money sounds great and all and you can try it but the problem is this requires snake hides which based on my own experience is difficult to obtain in bulk whether you're buying it or getting it yourself so you could try it but it was a big fail for me personally. However when I tried it it was possible to make about 40 to 50 mil an hour from just making pouches so who knows it might be easier now. At level 64 you can start making stranger plant pouches better XP but a lot more expensive and the ingredient bag plant one may be hard to buy. At level 69, you can make fruit bat pouches with green charms. I would say green charms are not actually worth farming at these levels, but if you happen to have any and want to use them at higher levels, fruit bats would be the way to go as they're one of the cheapest and best pouches. From levels 74 to 83, I would recommend making granite lobsters with crimson charms, and now would even be a good time to start using blue charms. Starting at level 76, you can make adamant minotaurs. At level 79, you can start making Fire and Moss Titans, which both give the same XP, so it just comes down to which one's cheaper. There's an Ice Titan, by the way, but I do not recommend that at all, as it actually requires two ingredients, an Air and Water Talisman, which means higher costs, and you make less pouches per inventory, so we're not doing that. From levels 83 to 96, make Spirit Dagonoffs with Crimson Charms. At level 86 to 89, switch over to Rune Minotaurs with Blue Charms. Then at level 89, make Geyser Titans with Blue Charms, which by the way, these are currently the best thing you can make with Blue Charms, and they're not even that expensive right now, so whenever you get Blue Charms after level 89, always make these. From levels 96 to 99, you're going to switch over to Pack Axe with Crimson Charms. Then finally, at level 99 and beyond, whether it's to 120 or 200 mil, you can make a mix of Geyser Titans with Blue Charms, and you have a choice between Pack Yaks and Pack Mammoths with Crimson Charms. Pack Mammoths can be decently cheap to make and better XP than Pack Yaks, but the ingredient the Mammoths Tusk may be hard to get. I literally did Pack Yaks most of my way to 200 mil XP, and personally, I think Pack Yaks will always be good. The Yak Hides are easy to get, which makes them cheap, and the pouch itself will always stay up in price just because how good it is. It is a beast of burden familiar that can hold up to 30 items. Now, the Pack Mammoths can hold a little bit more, but like I said, the ingredient's hard to get. So, you know what's the problem with my guide so far? The two main factors I take into consideration when deciding what pouches to make at what level is how difficult the ingredient may be to obtain and the cost per XP. Jagex could easily release an update that for example makes a certain ingredient more useful which drives the price up. And it probably won't affect everything that I mentioned in this guide, but even if there's just one thing and they drop enough updates like that, it can't impact enough of the guide rendering it useless. I'll probably make an updated version, but most likely not for at least another year or so, and things could definitely change by then. So, how do you know my guide still works and if certain things change, like pricing? How do you get the most updated information? For starters, in terms of whether ingredients hard to get, I can't help you much there as that has to be looked at on a pouch by pouch basis. You'll have to see what the ingredient is and try getting it yourself to see how easy it is for you to get. Pricing is definitely more of a concern here though, especially when it comes to the wild fluctuations in prices. Also, if let's say there's a double XP coming up and you're unprepared, prices start going up and you don't even know what to do anymore, I'll show you my trick on how to get the most updated information on all prices without having to look at one thing at a time and trying to do all the math yourself. So you go to your browser. Go to Google, I'll include links in the description for what I'm about to look up here, but in case you don't want to keep coming back to the video, all you have to do is type in RS3 and whatever charm you're using. You would have to do different searches if you're using multiple charms, but let's just do this one at a time. So let's say we're using Crimson Charms, so RS3, Crimson Charms is usually the first link. You want to go to the RS Wiki link, 
you want to come down to this chart labeled familiars it's the one that has the cost of all the pouches to the right you're going to see two columns here for that the second and last one called profit is the net cost per pouch we're not going to concern ourselves with that one you want the last one called gp slash xp or gp per xp this is how you determine what pouch gives you the most xp for your money best part about this chart is that you can sort it if you want to find the absolute cheapest pouch to make just click the top here sometimes they'll sort it the other way so just click it again be careful with this by the way i mean i already talked about spirit cobra pouches earlier in the video but something like talon beast for example it seems great and it gives a lot of xp too but the reason why this pouch is profitable is if you look over at the ingredient notice how it says not sold underneath because this ingredient isn't tradable and you would have to get it yourself it's cheap to make because you don't have to buy the ingredient but you do have to farm it which can be annoying there's a few pouches like this and i generally avoided these types of pouches in my own training and in my leveling suggestions when this video but if you happen to come across any of these ingredients you know feel free to use them of course you of course don't always want to go for the cheapest thing i mean besides hard to obtain ingredients you also want good xp Notice how Spirit Dagonal is Pack Mammoths and Pack Gax. My top three suggestions for Crimson Charms to do for like the last 20 levels are decently high up here on the list. You can also sort by XP. Pack Mammoths and Pack Gax are still decently high up here. Spirit Dagonal are a lower level pouch, so I didn't expect it to be that high up. But look over at the GP per XP column and see how much cheaper it is compared to most things around it. These are the things you want to think about when deciding what pouches to make. One last thing, if you want to look into other types of charms, you just run a Google search the same way. So let's say RS3 blue charms. And look, there's a similar chart here that you can play with. Everything here is super cheap right now, by the way. Look at this. There's only three pouches that are more than 6 GP per XP, and they're not even good pouches. Anyways, that's going to be the end of my video. Hope you found that helpful. If you did, remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell for future videos to come if you haven't already. Catch you later. Peace.